Good morning or afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Joe Johnson, and I'm the marketing coordinator for the electric and gas utility team here in Redlands, California. Our webinar today is a joint webinar with Ramtech and Esri titled, How to Effectively Move to the Utility Network and Platform. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. I'll then turn it over to our next, to our main speakers. On this slide, you'll see the different options you have during the webinar. You can change how you connect to the audio or adjust your view. Also, keep in mind you can ask questions during the webinar using the question dialog box and hitting the send button. There will be time for questions and answers towards the end of the webinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce our three speakers, Dave DeSera, Tim Marquardt, and Bill Meehan. Dave is the Vice President of Professional Services at Ramtech and has 25 plus years in the GIS, IT, and management consulting field. Tim is currently a senior consultant at Ramtech and was a former GIS manager for WE Energies. Tim has 17 plus years implementing and managing GIS solutions. Bill Meehan is the Director of Utility Solutions for Esri and is responsible for business development and marketing. Bill has 25 plus years in the utilities industry. With that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Bill Meehan. Thanks, Joe. I wish I, I, wish I only had 25 years of experience in the utility business. It's getting on even further than that. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining the uh, webcast and also specifically want to thank Ramtech for being a great partner over the years uh, with Esri. I've been with Esri now for 15 plus years and Ramtech has been there almost every one of those years. So what this slide is um, showing, I think, it's the utility industry as a tail of two arrows, you know, the up arrow and the down arrow. And so I, th I think there's just a lot of changes in the utility industry, and I think someone said that uh, uh, over the next five years there'll be more changes in the utility industry uh, than there has been been over the last 100 years of the utility, or excuse me, more than 100 years it's been in existence. So let's take a, take a look at the two arrows and where does that utility industry changing so much? So the rising arrow, I think of you know, rising uh, competition, increasing competition in the form of distributed energy and the number of consumers that are going to be now what we call prosumers and that's, that's going to be significant. Uh, customer expectations are rising significantly. It's it's no longer uh, about just you know I'll, I'll be there in a couple of days or that sort of stuff. The expectations are growing substantially. The age of workers is increasing uh, rapidly, as we say. I think the average age of the utility worker in the United States is around 52 or so, uh, and certainly the age of the infrastructure is rising as well. Uh, that's not a good thing necessarily. Also, there's a rising threat of climate change, and uh, you know sea levels are rising. There's coastal flooding, and and uh, the temperatures are rising too, which will impact utility workers. Many union contracts are really tied to the temperature. You know, people can't work over a certain temperature or under a certain temperature for the crews. Things are rising. The cost of water is rising, and and you know the numbers of leaks gas, water leaks are rising. Uh, that I, I don't know about you, but I think the number of droughts have risen and maybe even the number of floods, and, and they occur in different areas. The number of sensors, things, just the number of things out there that are linked together. We'll talk about the Internet of Things maybe a little bit. And of course, the, uh, what's rising is the influence of social media too. So those are kind of the rising arrows, and some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are challenges. What's lowering typically in the utility industry, particularly in the electric industry, is revenues are lowering. As a result of that, budgets tend to be a little lower. Natural gas prices are, are lowering or being or lower. There's a lower tolerance for things like you know just connection services and lower tolerance for outages, particularly today in, in this world. There's a lower tolerance for delays and, and people on the phone that don't really answer the phone right. There's a lower tolerance of regulators for things going wrong. How about this also? There's a lower tolerance for facilities being installed. You know, we used to talk about things like NIMBY, not in my backyard, to things like NOPE, 
which is not on planet Earth. So the sort of the, the refusal of things to be built is really um, a problem. So a lowering of tolerance for that sort of stuff. There's also a lowering of the skills and availability. And, and finally, there's a low grade. I mean, the low grade of our infrastructure and of the energy infrastructure, particularly the American Society of Civil Engineers every couple of years puts out a scorecard. And the energy infrastructure was scored as a D plus. The water infrastructure or the water uh, drinking water infrastructure was a D and the wastewater, I think, was a D plus as well. So there's a lot of those things going on. So that's kind of the state of the, of the industry, the tail of two arrows, a lot of going up and a lot going down. So what does that drive us toward? What does that drive the industry toward? And, and I believe it's transformation, that whole idea of things changing so rapidly over the next several years. The term transformation is used a lot. And another term that's used in terms of transformation is this idea of digital transformation. So the utility industries are going through a kind of a, a, a rebirth, a transformation of their whole technology stack. IoT, for example, lots and lots of sensors, and not just single sensors, but sensors that are connected together. Big data, we hear a lot about that, about analytics and figuring out what we're doing together uh, with the big data. Of course, AMI, not just in the electric system, but electric, water, gas, all of that stuff. AMI being advanced metering infrastructure. We're measuring more and more things. That's really part of IoT, really. You know, advanced SCADA systems and what we call advanced distribution management systems and things like uh, PMUs synchrophaser measurement units, those things are all making the, the, the utilities really a digital transformation or, or they're heading towards digital transformation. And really the last thing, and of course what I'm interested in particularly and have been interested for many, many years, by the way I was with a power company uh, many years before I came with Esri running operations. But really the, the, the kind of underlying digital transformation could be and is the GIS platform. We think about GIS in a couple of different ways. So when I hear that, when I think about the term digital transformation, I also think of the term digital transition, almost as a, as a conflicting thing, digital transformation versus digital transition. So when we think about GIS, for example, we think of perhaps mapping systems and how to make really nice maps. And in, in terms of digital way, that's kind of a transition from a, from a physical map to a, to a digital map. That's kind of a transition. But when we go from a, transition or a paper map to a location platform, which is really what ArcGIS is, it's a location platform. The notion of a platform can be transformational, actually. And when I, when I, and one of my favorite analogies in terms of transformation, digital transformation, maybe versus digital transition, is the music industry. And for, for many years, for practically in my whole life and maybe my parents' life, people carried around musical things like you know vinyl records, and then eventually we went to uh, cassette tapes and cartridge tapes, which were all analog. And then we made a digital transition to CDs. But really, did that really change things dramatically? And not really. It wasn't until we transitioned to things like streaming and, and things like Alexa where we could just call up and, and, and say, oh, I just want to hear a, a particular song. That's really digital transformation of the music industry. And I think we're going through a similar thing. And really at the heart of that transformation is this concept of a platform. And many of us use platforms every day. Facebook and Amazon, as we said. iTunes is a, is a, is a transformational platform. And one of the key elements probably the key components of the utility business is location. And so therefore, the transformational aspect is a location platform. And that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what Ramtech is going to talk about today. And how do we move from maybe a digital transition to a, to a platform? Well, it's not really it's not when we're going to do it. We've been doing it now for the last many, I would say four or five years, We've been transitioning to the ArcGIS platform, and one of the characteristics of any platform is this ability to communicate and collaborate with one another on any device, anytime, anywhere, and that's characteristic of the ArcGIS platform. So when we think about this idea of moving to the utility network, it isn't really just about something like a utility network. It's about how do we enhance and how do we develop the platform the total platform, not just the part about the network, the whole platform. We still want to collaborate, communicate, and share information throughout, uh, throughout the organization. 
So what we're going to talk about today is about the utility network, but we want to make sure we think about it in the overall context of the utility platform as a transformational aspect. And the utility network itself doesn't really, it's not something separate. It is, it is adding substantial capability to already what I would call a remarkable platform already. In other words, it's bringing more capability to what we do today, more capability to the platform itself. So things like a higher fidelity of the network modeling. That means we get a little bit we can model things in just a bit more detail than we've done in the past. It means distributed network capability. So in the past, really the good thing is getting that data out into the people's hands, but now we'll have even more capability to do things in the field, in the call center, in the you know the uh, the customers' hands, in and and even beyond that, maybe even in um, other organizations throughout the uh, uh, throughout the community. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my friends at Ramtech, and they're going to talk about how we can then move to kind of create this uh, enhanced utility platform called the ArcGIS platform. So, and I, and I, I guess particularly, I want to thank Ramtech too for just being such a great partner. So I'm going to turn it over to Ramtech. Take it away, guys. Thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Uh, this is Dave DeCero with Ramtech. So I wanted to uh, just take the opportunity to, to thank Esri uh, for uh, working with us the last couple of years, uh, specifically around the utility network and the platform itself. Um, Tim, you want to jump to the next slide? One of the things that uh, took place uh, a couple years back was a series of meetings with um, the folks on the utility side. and really starting to look at the aspects of this uh, upcoming uh, change relative to the, the platform and the, the capacity or the capability that it's going to provide as well as the utility network and the combination of their both of those. And so what we ended up uh, spending um, time uh, working through was how this, uh, this upgrade process was going to take place for for all of you uh, from the utility perspective and, and what it means from the standpoint of, of change as, as Bill's talked about. So we've got um, a couple of slides that I'm going to talk through. Actually, Bill, I think, did a, a great job of highlighting uh, the slides relative to the platform utility network overview, which, Tim, you can jump to. And then we're going to talk a little into uh, a process that we developed uh, called GNET, and as well as a tool to support uh, a uh, tool to support uh, um, data validation. So with that, I'm going to just jump into a few highlights. As Bill talked about, the whole idea of this location-based platform um, is, is a significant one for many of you as you've started to look at this, uh, this advanced technology in terms of support of uh, the end user relative to you know, basically every process within the organization GIS can touch and what that means from an organizational standpoint relative to uh, uh, meeting their business needs. Um, so again, that enterprise perspective. The, uh, the whole advancement with the, uh, the platform itself and pro uh, from the standpoint of additional uh, capability relative to data creation and sharing and collaboration is an area that we're seeing over and over again from utility to utility uh, to support uh, that, that growing need and the integration as Bill talked about with some of the core systems uh, within the organization and and many seen ways to leverage this technology uh, um, both Tim and I uh, get to work with lots of utilities from a strategy standpoint building out roadmaps and you know one of the things that we see are literally dozens and dozens of potential uses of this technology and in and, and how this new, this new technology from Esri is really advancing and providing the capability to support that. Um, and you know, one good example, I think, is on the analytical side, especially with uh, the newer tools uh, um, from Esri. <clears throat> and then um, I think, as you'll see as you go forward, there's uh, a number of things that uh, Pro and, and Portal will be uh, supporting in, in addition to the, uh, or including uh, the capability and functionality of the, the utility network. Next slide. So this is a, a slide provided uh, by our, our partners at Esri. I think it uh, provides kind of a nice, uh, simple overview of, of the various uh, you know, 
capability from the desktop to the device to delivering this capability of editing and tracing and executive dashboards through the web. Um, and this concept of what Portal brings to uh, um, many of you that uh, have either implemented or are looking at implementing um, and, and how the uh, utility network plays into that. So again, Bill really is, I think, laid out that picture of, of this encompassing uh, environment that's uh, being uh, uh, architected uh, by Esri to support this enterprise environment to support the utility needs for these, these changes that uh, Bill spoke to. Uh, next slide. And I think one aspect of that that I think many of you are interested in is this concept of uh, what's going to be the utility network and you know where are things headed relative to that. Um, as we've been working with uh, the utility network from the standpoint of its capability, um, it's uh, it's going to provide a, a you know many new dimensions relative to the uh, the capability that you currently have and the network is focused obviously around electric gas water wastewater sewer and telco um, so there's uh, many organizations out there that are looking at uh, uh, this advancement with this new model in terms of the new capabilities to support uh, a variety of things whether it's modeling or integration whatever it might be. Uh, relative to uh, some of the things actually Bill just talked about, uh, not to mention the, uh, the ability to do uh, uh, um, improved or greater editing and uh, analysis capabilities. So I think in context, I think the, this whole idea of this transformation that's going on, um, not only from a business perspective, but uh, in many ways from a technology perspective, is, is really what led us to the whole concept of GNET. Um, and this concept of uh, the network environment transformation, which is what uh, NET stands for, and then uh, Ramtech's typical logo relative to the little G. So really what um, we've sat through uh, in terms of, as I mentioned earlier, talking with uh, Esri and many of our customers around the, the various considerations that uh, organizations are thinking through, whether it's the, the new functionality that, that uh, Bill and I just mentioned briefly, um, the requirements relative to the new utility network, um, issues around content quality and connectivity. There's uh, a number of new business uh, rules relative to the utility network that's going to provide greater and greater functionality for, for users. Um, and that does uh, potentially uh, have uh, an impact relative to your current data and what that means uh, going forward. Um, integration with ADMS, I think from my perspective, we're seeing uh, um, uh, a big push by utilities uh, to look at uh, greater and greater integration, especially with the advent of new utility network to support this uh, near real-time integration with tools like uh, solutions like ADMS. Um, other considerations around the system architecture and performance. With the new advances in the technology, there's a number of things that have to be considered through that process, not to mention the potential for work changes. So those organizational uh, changes that relate to uh, may, maybe how you're doing things differently or will be in the future around data ma maintenance, data editing, um, how you're integrating or sharing information across systems. Um, and then there's things around you know, the financial and human resources to support the upgrade and ongoing operation and maintenance of those, not to mention you know, alignment with other initiatives. How does this uh, compare, compete, relate to other initiatives going on within your organization? So um, basically what we've laid out is uh, the Advantage program associated with GNET, um, looking at an end-to-end -end process to support the planning, uh, the assessing the planning and the achieving of uh, the, the upgrade to the uh, the platform as well as the utility network, and it basically it includes a number of uh, new and existing tools uh, or uh, intellectual property from Ramtech, and and really we looked at this from uh, from the standpoint of trying to reduce risk, um, expediting the uh, the upgrade as quickly as possible as you're looking to move, and um, the one thing that we've heard over and over again from our users is this whole concept of how do we how do we eliminate the error or the potential of error uh, working through our day-to-day -day process within an organization uh, through, through input or what have you um, and try to improve that and maintain that in a way that uh, allows you to um, not have to go back and do uh, mass updates at some point or cleanups 
um, which I think many organizations uh, kind of struggle with uh, uh, from time to time. So this idea of doing that has uh, really led us through uh, the development of this Advantage program. Next slide. So the next couple of slides here are going to just talk into that a bit more. Um, but I just wanted to point out here, this is a really important concept. You know, we've been talking about technology, but it's more than that, as I mentioned. So it's, it's getting all the things that have to get laid out in place relative to a clear direction in terms of what that is and the priorities associated with it. So there may be technology-related things that you've got to be looking at in terms of architecture and upgrade. There may be data-related cleanup things that have to be done. But again, related to maybe organizational change or process change that have to be considered. So laying out a roadmap around that and identifying timing and cost, I think is a key aspect to support uh, for many organizations a successful uh, upgrade to, to the new uh, platform and the uh, utility network. But that means going through and defining the requirements and the data associated with what that change is going to be. It also means looking at things like validating your data, the quality, the content, the connectivity rules associated with that as it stands today and also what the requirements are going to be in the future relative to the utility network. I may mention this a second time, but I think this idea of all the, all the design and, and thought uh, leadership that's gone into the utility network uh, to support a lot more complicated and sophisticated capabilities from a utility perspective is defining a number of business rules. And we've been working with uh, the Esri team on the, on the utility network for the last year and a half trying to understand those business rules uh, relative to the networks on the gas and electric side to ensure that um, as many as we can, defining and building those rules into uh, the G-Ready tool, which Tim is going to speak to shortly. In addition to that, I think uh, making sure, as I mentioned before, the alignment of those key uh, business and IT strategies around this, right? If GIS was the only uh, system on the uh, in the utility, this wouldn't be an issue, but GIS, as we all know, competes with every other technology in the organization, and there's a tremendous amount of interdependencies, whether it's a business-related project or an IT-related project. And how do you build consensus around that to support that? Um, and or related to, as I've mentioned before, the process change and or the organizational change management, the OCM component that you know any new technology or advance in technology brings to identify, uh, uh, to be identified. And this will all help in terms of reducing risk um, and or related obstacles that may play into that. Next slide. So the Advantage program, uh, this is a very high level uh, view of it around the asset, uh, the assess, the plan, and the achieve is kind of uh, lays out in kind of a higher level uh, graphic. I just wanted to point this, this overall process out. Um, we're going to focus primarily on the assess and the plan pieces. So Tim, you want to jump to the next slide for the sake of time. Um, so the assess phase, as I mentioned, uh, is, is really providing you the ability to identify and analyze the business needs, the current and planned system and data requirements along with those processes associated with uh, um, that are going to be necessary to support this, this uh, change in terms of the platform as well as utility network. So there's a number of things obviously that have to be considered and so the assessment would look through that in terms of uh, understanding the system requirements, the upgrade related requirements, analyzing the data to identify quality, uh, qualities, uh, data qualities as such. Um, and then looking through, um, if you're running the geometric network, the GN versus the UN, there's going to be a number of gaps that you're going to have to look at as you consider the, the migration. And then identifying those critical business process changes that will take place because there are a number of those that uh, we've uh, we've identified as we've gone through this process, um, and then from there we really lay out what the requirements are to uh, to make sure this upgrade happens as quickly as and as smoothly as possible, and then from there we want to evaluate and develop whatever corrective actions there are. Um, this is just a simple example of uh, some of the technology or uh, process and tools that uh, we use in terms of going through and trying to prioritize certain things relative to putting together a roadmap like this and making sure that we've identified the things that provide the greatest business value or cost uh, uh, return on investment relative to that and, and a process by which to uh, prioritize. Uh, next slide. 
as it relates to the, the planning phase, so that whole assessment and the results of that get laid out in terms of a what sometimes we refer to as a uh, uh, an upgrade roadmap, um, and that's really to to develop this course of action relative to uh, you know what's going to have to be done uh, relative to uh, uh, deploying um, uh, um, things on on the data side, the system side, uh, any process change or practice related change relative to that. Next slide. So this next slide just kind of hits on, you know, what you'd typically be thinking about from a deployment roadmap perspective. You know, from a data data standpoint, the content, the quality, the the model itself, and and the design of that um, mapping related to uh, you know that from the UN, the GN to the UN, and then the associated migration scripts and the migration needed to move from the uh, the, the GN to the uh, the the, uh, the new utility network, and I think those migration scripts are ones that um, uh, Esri is uh, working diligently on relative to gas and electric at this point and others, uh, and they'll be used as uh, part of that upgrade process. Um, Ramtech has also been working on uh, its own set of migration scripts in conjunction with Esri relative to those business rules to help support utilities move through the migration of uh, of that process. As it relates to systems and applications, obviously you're going to have some change with greater functionality and some of the newer technology based on the platform. So there may be architectural integration related uh, considerations that have to play out here or be considered, um, not to mention the new functionality around the platform and the apps you know, relative to Pro and Pearl and such. As far as workflow and practices, um, again, this gets back to kind of that, that process change element where there may be a, a opportunities to improve how you look at your, your collecting data and maybe updating processes. Um, we're working with a utility right now where there, you know, a lot of the emphasis is around process change around how data maintenance and or data collection is taking place or will take place uh, with this uh, uh, move to the new technology. So again, back to you know, potential process improvements relative to the business and or operational side of the organization. And then there may be organizational change as well, right? Learning new technology. Um, so there may be training associated with it um, and or there may be changes relative to structure and support as well. Next slide. So at a very high level, the achieve phase really then lays out what's going to happen, whether it's the, the, the upgrade itself the design of the, geo, uh, the the utility network, if there's any data correction, migration, conflation work that has to take place, um, and then the related upgrade associated with the platform, that type of thing, and then things that you'd think about relative to the implementation or deployment of that new technology around the testing, training, and deployment. Next slide. So this kind of I, highlights uh, kind of the three phases uh, um, that I mentioned, the assess, the plan, and achieve. Um, now we've uh, added uh, some tools in here and process and technology relative to Ramtech's uh, uh, capabilities. And we've got uh, G Strategy, which is a process that Ramtech uh, uses. It's, it's really to lay out this roadmap approach uh, to support that business and technology um, and data aspects that I mentioned. Um, and then there are other tools, the G-Ready tool, which we're going to focus on here in the next uh, segment of this presentation. Um, uh, Ramtech does quite a bit of work in the data side, so we've got tools. Uh, G-Conflate is another that supports conflation, so there may be an aspect of your migration to, uh, the, uh, from a data standpoint that you may want to look at conflation, so there's other technology tools relative to QA and process that may take place. And then I mentioned earlier the uh, the migration scripts, which we affectionately call GMove, and, uh, and that's really helping with the move from the, U, the GN to the UN. And then our more traditional uh, upgrade and implementation re related services. So uh, next slide. So the uh, first two phases, basically the assess and plan phase, this gives you kind of a sense of what it takes to go through and, and go through the Advantage program, the GNET Advantage program. Really the first couple, three weeks are really going through and, and verifying and interviewing uh, folks both on the business and technology side, whether it's IT and GIS, 
And from there, we really look at uh, understanding where your needs are and where you want to go. And from that, we perform a gap assessment to really look at where you're at and where you need to get to relative to the new technology and the move to the utility network. Um, and from there, uh, we'll go through a prioritization process with uh, you and your team to identify those things on the data side that are critical, uh, that need to be moved or cleaned up. Um, the migration up to or the, the uh, upgrade to the new, uh, some of the newer uh, technology on, the, on the, uh, the platform side. And then any process changes that may, de may take place and then from there, that all gets laid out into a, uh, uh, a strategy, a roadmap uh, with associated budgets and schedules and uh, projects themselves. And then that's you know, gone through a review cycle. Um, this could take longer than 12 weeks, depending on um, the size of the organization, but we try to focus it in that 12-week period. And then from there, it's really laying out what, uh, uh, what what deployment schedule gets laid out. Um, for many organizations that we're talking to right now, um, their issue is around data and data cleanup. And so they're trying to get ahead of uh, the upgrade to the, the utility network. Um, and some of those data cleanup efforts may take months or even some years, depending on how they want to approach it. So there is you know, um, this window of time, the runway, in terms of getting prepped so they make the upgrade to uh, the UN and the platform as uh, quickly as possible when they get to that point. Uh, next slide. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tim. Uh, Tim is going to talk about uh, a tool called G-Ready. Um, it's, uh, it's a data uh, quality analytics tool um, that's a key uh, component to uh, some of the technology that uh, Ramtech provides relative to uh, uh, data cleanup and uh, this whole uh, move to, and upgrade to the, uh, the utility network. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Tim. Okay. Hey, thanks, Dave, and thanks, everyone, for your time. So as Dave mentioned, um, we've developed uh, a tool called G-Ready, and this is an extensive uh, part of our GNET program offering, as, as Dave mentioned. And we developed this. Um, kind of in for two reasons. Um, initially, uh, it was uh, a tool that utilities could utilize and can utilize uh, to implement within their daily operations to analyze and report on errors within their data to improve the currency and the quality of their data today in the geometric network. Uh, as we started development of this tool, though, we quickly realized that we could implement functionality within it that would help customers to identify errors in their data that may contribute um, to problems with the move from the geometric network to the new utility network. And it was at that time, about a year and a half ago, as Dave mentioned, that we started working more closely with Esri to understand um, what parts of the geometric network could potentially cause problems with the move to the utility network if they weren't addressed ahead of time. And so um, in conjunction with Esri, we've um, made several um, pieces of functionality uh, available within the G-Ready tool uh, that will help, as I said before, not only uh, make sure that the data, the data in your GIS today is functioning and as clean as possible, but also set the stage for a successful move in the future to the utility network. So you can see here, uh, G-Ready obviously um, ensures that data readiness for today. It can also help with integration projects that you may be planning. Um, in advance of any move to the utility network, such as an ADMS uh, or an extract of data to uh, a load um, modeling tool or any other type of uh, system that consumes uh, GIS data. So G-Ready is an application that works in conjunction with Esri's data reviewer uh, extension. It supports file and enterprise geodatabases. And further than that, it also supports versions within an enterprise geodatabase. So we have some customers that um, are utilizing G-Ready to examine their uh, database as a whole. And we have other customers that are currently utilizing G-Ready to act upon edit versions um, or different versions within their database to verify um, the data in that version before it gets posted back to the default database version. Uh, we also support ArcFM implementations natively, so there's no um, issue in utilizing G-Ready in conjunction with ArcFM. And we also have the capability um, of assessing your data 
within a certain polygon area or a group of areas. So going back to that version support, um, in conjunction with a polygon, we have uh, the ability to analyze data in very discrete locations. That could be a work order polygon, a, a feeder or circuit polygon, a larger district polygon, or any other way that you'd like to look at your data geographically. And then we also have multiple outputs that come out of the tool. And these take the, the form of PDF reports, of a scorecard that gets reported out to you for a full report of the quality and condition of your data. We also have a very detailed report that comes out in an Excel workbook that gets uh, down to the individual feature level to report on errors uh, across the database down to the object ID so you can uh, find and track those errors. And then we also output a data reviewer workspace. And this is very important for allowing customers to use the data reviewer extension along with this workspace to navigate through the errors that the tool finds right within ArcGIS Desktop. So it allows people to go um, and view those errors, make changes and updates, and edit the data based on the errors that the tool finds. There are three main areas that we have currently within G-Ready. Those are the core, the electric, and the gas uh, validations. The core GIS validations we're going to look at briefly first. Those are applicable uh, regardless of the, the, your utility type, be it electric or gas. But then we also have some specific checks that we've developed for both the electric and gas utilities. In the areas of data completeness, uh, we have about five different types of checks here that we're going to briefly talk about. Our first area is um, in the core area is data completeness. So here we're looking for things like values that are outside of a certain range for a domain or a subtype. Um, any values that um, in individual attribute fields that uh, are not unique that the user uh, classifies that should have uniqueness, we can detect those. Any uh, feature class fields that have no values where the user has defined that there shouldn't be. Uh, present in the data. We have the ability to detect and report on each of those instances. Further on in the core functionality, we have our feature connectivity checks. So here's where we examine um, instances within the geometric network where we have uh, disk connections and things that maybe a visual inspection might not catch all the time, but an automated tool like G-Ready is able to find. So looking at things like disconnected points and polylines, you can think of their um, gas mains, not, uh, excuse me, gas valves not snapped to a main or a fuse not snapped to a piece of conductor, things like that. And those may be very, very um, small instances and gaps between where that snapping should take place that may not be visible to um, someone uh, viewing the data uh, but this automated process was able to detect those disconnections. Looking for things like dangle, so that's a line. Uh, you can think of like a gas service that should have a meter attached to one end and be connected to the gas main at the other. So like if the meter was missing or disconnected, um, a dangle would be present in that particular service. And also an invalid cardinality check. So that looks for um, a certain number of connections that a feature class has with another feature class. A classic example there of, uh, would be a switch on primary. Uh, generally, a switch would have two connections allowed. Um, and any violation to that would be considered an error. So you can think of a switch that accidentally got snapped to a T intersection, for an example. That would violate the two connection cardinality check. Our next area within the core uh, validations are geometry validations, and there are currently 10 that we look at, and these can take uh, the form of a whole host of things, ranging from um, duplicate features in geometry, duplicate vertices for lines, um, invalid geometry, which if you've ever been editing, editing and had the, the invalid geometry pop-up saying that the feature couldn't be edited, we can find all of those in the database so you can address those ahead of time. Um, polyline cutbacks, that's lines that cut back on themselves at a severe angle, which you can define what that angle is. Um, polyline length, so that would be detecting lines that are smaller than a certain value that you define. Maybe you want to find any line in your data that's smaller than 0 0.01 feet or 0.5 of uh, half of a foot and things like that. Sometimes those are created without the user even knowing them um, in an edit session, and we can detect those. Also stack points and lines. So those are lines and points that um, are stacked uh, on top of each other but are of different feature classes. So a duplicate geometry 
Above there would be two of the same features sharing the same coincident geometry, but a stack point uh, check looks for two different feature classes sharing that same location. So you can think of like a fuse on top of a switch or something like that that would upset the balance of the geometric network. We also have relationship validations that we utilize within the tool. So that looks for relationships between feature classes and uh, their relationship to other feature classes or between feature classes and their relationship to their related records. And we can scan those relationship classes both ways to look for features that don't have a related record when they should, or just the opposite, uh, related or, uh, records that are orphaned that are missing their parent feature. Uh, we also have the availability to include um, proximity checks and filtering within there to refine that check. Uh, so so the proximity check would be, I have, for example, a fuse related to a support structure. Um, and it may find a relationship, but we have the ability to say, uh, make sure that that relationship is valid within a certain distance. Because we've seen cases where a fuse to support structure relationship may be present, but it may be miles and miles away because someone made an editing mistake when they made that relationship. So we have the ability to find those types of instances too. Uh, we also have uh, our network validation, and this looks for disconnected network features. So this is a little bit different than the disconnected points uh, check that you saw earlier in the geometry validation. This examines the logical network that is uh, present kind of behind the scenes of the geometric network. And so you can think of this as um, if you have a device that is snapped and part of the network, but someone through an editing function maybe selected that device and hit the disconnect button and never reconnected it, the feature would still be coincident to the line uh, that it snapped to, but as far as the logical network goes, it is disconnected from that. So we are able to detect and report on those instances as well. Again, all of these things contribute to when you're making that jump from the geometric to network to the utility network, ensuring that your data is connected and as clean as possible. Next, I want to just briefly talk about our electric-specific and gas-specific data checks. So our electric data checks, uh, the first one we have are, are the data checks that look at the comparisons between features and their related records concerning phasing and voltage. So we have the ability to interrogate uh, features and related records to make sure that the phase designation uh, fields match between, for example, a transformer and all of the transformer-related records. And we can even detect inconsistencies where there are uh, like bank situations. So a three-phase transformer bank that's a 150 kVA feature is expected to have an A and a B and a C phase unit record, each of being 50 kVA. If there was a um, inconsistency there where the sum of those unit records uh, was greater or less than what the feature record should be or missing, we would detect those types of things through the tool. Uh, also for phasing, the same holds true. We, we take a look at the phase designation, um, uh, excuse me, for the voltage and rated KVA, we can take a look at the and evaluate those fields for rated KVA between feature and unit record. We also have the avail availability to conduct that same check between conductor and the conductor info records. Then we have our electric system checks, and these are some checks that we've worked very closely with Esri to develop over the last year or so, because we really feel that these types of checks uh, will possibly present some of the greatest challenges when making the, the jump from the geometric network to the utility network. And these all have to do with verifying um, the phase and voltage uh, settings on devices and in conductors between the source and the endpoints of circuits. So we utilize a tracing algorithm where we're able to ensure that each device on a circuit has a valid phase path from that device back to the source and a valid voltage path back from that device to the source. We also have the availability to detect network loops and to validate uh, instances where the voltage changes at a conductor uh, intersection, but there is not a step device present. We could flag that as an error or something to more closely look at. Uh, further on than that, we can also evaluate the step devices and step themselves to ensure that, uh, for example, a step transformer has a high side and low side voltage rating that corresponds with the connected conductors on either side of it. So again, these checks really develop to help customers evaluate their data at a very detailed level 
to ensure that it's ready to make not only for uh, um, utilizing their data in daily operations today, but again, to make that leap to the utility network in the future. And then we have some gas system checks um, that we've included with G-Ready. And these all um, are concentrating on looking for invalid connections between pipe segments based on uh, critical attributes such as diameter, uh, fitting sizes, material, and pressure. So we have a number of checks um, such as the diameter validation that validates the pipe diameter, ensuring that the proper fittings are present where the diameter of pipes changes. The same holds true for material and pressure validations. So at each of those points where the material or pressure would change between pipe segments, there should be certain types of fittings with the correct attributes to denote that change. So we not only find those instances where those attribute values change between pipe segments, but we can also evaluate the attributes on the fittings that are present at those segments to ensure that they have the correct attribution for the type of change that's present there. And then finally, our gas system checks. So these also utilize uh, tracing uh, functionality within the tool that helps to verify uh, two things. The first is a cathodic protection. So we have the availability to verify that steel gas mains uh, are connected uh, through um, the correct uh, connections and also any bond wires uh, that have either anode or cathode, uh, excuse me, either an anode or a rectifier protecting them. And that's again done through a tracing function that analyzes the material and ensures that there's connectivity back to that um, uh, rectifier device. We also have a validate service connections check that helps to ensure that there are a certain number of services not exceeded uh, on a branch uh, service installation. So typically, um, most utilities allow no more than two services uh, branching off. Any detection of two, more than two services would be flagged as an error for further investigation. We also have, finally, within G-Ready, an extended support function. And this allows users to implement any types of custom tasks that they would like to include within the um, G-Ready tool that are not part of our core functionality. Some customers have certain SQL statements that they run uh, on a, frequent, uh, a certain level of frequency, and we're able to include those right within the tool, as well as any other data review or batch jobs that they may want to configure or additional report fields they'd like to have. So those extens extended support functions um, work real well with the G-Ready tool in that anything that we can bring in in that regard gets reported right with the results. So you can run those in conjunction with the G-Ready assessment and have the reporting come out in the same fashion. Just real briefly, wanted to touch on our process for the G-Ready assessment. Um, really, the key here to making this implementation of G-Ready and as part of our GNet program offering a success is really the collaboration uh, with the customer to understand their data model and how their particular model works at their utility. because. Um, with the different customers we work at, there's even though many uh, utilities utilize the same base data model, there are always nuances and differences between them. So having this collaborative effort where we work with the customer, test their data, configure the tool specifically to fit their data model, and then uh, do further testing and delivery of that configuration back to them is uh, something that we've found to be the most beneficial through that collaborative effort. And then obviously at the end, we present the final report and deliver any follow-up uh, deployment and training that's needed for the tool. Uh, it's really uh, a delivery option that we have with G-Ready uh, that gives some flexibility. So we um, have many different ways that we can utilize the tool, either on-premise. Um, we have the availability to deploy this to user machines or on, on a Citrix type of a network environment. We also have, offer service-based models where we can uh, take on the burden of running the G-Ready assessments on our side and just reporting back to the errors and the reports. Um, for enterprise licensing that we offer, there are no user limits, so this could be installed on user machines as needed or, on, as I mentioned, on a Citrix network. Um, our total program offers the configuration workshop. Again, that's a, that collaborative effort that we provide with the customer. Is also and also the extensive data testing that, that we do. Um, for customers that uncover a large amount of errors and need help uh, with data cleanup, we offer a very uh, flexible um, 
support there for that cleanup uh, between our U.S. and our India operations. And we offer a very flexible cost structure to address any capital and O&M budgets as far as licensing and uh, cleanup. So again, that collaborative approach we really feel is the foundation for success. We really want to understand the customer's data and provide them a, a G-Ready and a G-Net offering that's really um, detailed and specific to their particular utility. So with that, we can entertain any questions that you may have as far as the GNET program or the G-Ready application. And Joe, I'll turn that back over to you. Great. Hey, thanks, uh, Dave and Tim. Very, very informative. Um, do have some questions that came in. Um, go ahead and read a couple, and you guys can answer them. Uh, so the first question was, how does the utility network model associate to common information model, or SIM? Yeah, hey folks, I, this is Bill and I'll, I'll take that one if you, and then I can hand it over to you guys if you have any further comments. So SIM is an international standard. It's from the IEC, I think it's 61970 and a few other uh, numbers, series uh, numbers. It's an inter, interoperability, well it's actually a modeling standard and, and it's used often as interoperability. W one of the things I alluded to earlier in, the, in my presentation was something called the high fidelity uh, modeling capability of the new network. Uh, uh, model and that really is built on the, the notion. It's not a it's not a sim exact sim, but it's built on the on some of the concepts that were in sim. And uh, following uh, the initial release in uh, soon, we'll probably we're expected uh, to have a sim uh, adapter to uh, to hook onto the ArcGIS platform to allow for sim. Uh, integration or SIM extracting of the data model out into things like ADMS and SCADA and so forth. So uh, it's it's kind of part and parcel of it. Uh, Dave and uh, Tim, do you have any comments further about SIM? Uh, this is Dave. No, I don't have any additional. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great. Why don't we go to the next question there? Uh, yep. Unless Tim, you have something? No. Oh, I think okay. you hit it, Bill. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, the next question is, how does the utility network align with the utility pipeline data model, UPDM? UPDM. Well, uh, UPDM, this is Bill again. So UPDM, of course, is a gas uh, uh, model that we've been working on for a couple of years. And the folks that were uh, instrumental in getting that going, not just uh, within ESRI, but within the whole user community, have developed this sort of standardized or, or templatized data model for gas, both pipeline uh, and distribution so to sort of unify between that together and that is uh, and we uh, our teams are working very closely with the utility network teams here in Esri to make sure that there's an alignment between the two uh, uh, we didn't really mention it but as part of the offering the initial offering for uh, the utility network that will include uh, domain specific data models which would be one of them which would be a gas model which would be aligned with the UPDM All right. Thanks, Bill. Uh, next question is, uh, why should a utility start preparing now for the move to the utility network if they don't plan to move right away? Do so you want to take that? Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> take that one. I think yeah. you guys would want to take that one, yeah. Sure, sure. This is Tim. Um, yeah, that's really important because, um, you know, as we've seen time and time again, um, projects, especially large ones like this, um, they generally get derailed and and get uh, pushed back time-wise due to data cleanup issues. And you know nothing stops a project dead in its tracks quicker than having to go back and address data problems before you can uh, make the move and have the functionality that you want to have in the new system working. So I, I would say that it's really important to start looking now, even if that move to the utility network is you know several years off, to ensure that you're putting the practices. Uh, in place today, not only to clean up any data issues that you may have that are current in your data, but you can also start to address any data maintenance issues that may be contributing uh, to future data problems recurring over time. So it's really never in my mind too early to start addressing those types of issues because they're going to pay dividends not only for your daily operations in today's environment, but really set the stage for when you do eventually make that move to the UN. Yeah, thanks, yeah, Tim. I, I, I do have a comment. 
Go ahead, ahead. A quick one, and then I'll, ha I'll hand it off to you, Dave. So for those of us who have really been around for a really long time, you know, the, 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 uh, the GISs in utilities have a huge, long legacy. I mean, they started out as, as probably being digitized from CAD drawings or just, a, a, you know, there's just a lot of stuff that, I mean, how many times they've been migrated and converted. So um, the, the quality of the data sometimes can be, uh, can be inconsistent or... Um, throughout the whole area. So that's really, I think Tim is absolutely in the money. You want to get the data really as clean as possible. And I think we all know that the data uh, has varying degrees of, uh, of quality and some, some issues floating around there in the, in the data. Dave, you want to pick it up from here? Yeah, I think I'll just, I'll add to it. I think the, uh, what we've seen so far with, with the various implementations of, of the G-Ready tool uh, is that as, as you go through that evaluation and you come up with that scorecard around, you know, the features, the data itself, um, you know, in some cases that some of that cleanup can be as simple as a, a routine to run against that data to fill in an all field, what have you. Um, some of it's going to require, you know, people sitting down and really going through and, and looking at things and analyzing the data. There may be situations, too, where you're going to have to get out in the field and do field validation to that mm -hmm. data. And so all of those have to get, you know, thought through and laid out. And, and as, you know, Tim alluded that this whole concept of, you know, that taking time and that potentially slowing things up is really, I think, one of the big values of, you know, starting to think about it to now, think, think it, start thinking about it now versus later. It's always easy to kick the can down the road a ways, but the, uh, you know, if you can plan things out now and, and be prepared, because if, you know, if you're going to go out in the field and collect data to support some of the the new advances in some of the technology, um, you know, and getting that planned out now and align that with the the, the upgrade um, will will help out everybody. So I think uh, you know planning is always good if uh, you can make that happen. Great guys, this this will be our last question as we're running out of time. If if we did not get to your question, we will make sure to to answer you guys uh, offline. So. Um, just know we will answer those questions. Uh, so the last question is, will the GNET process include the upgrade requirements for ArcGIS Pro? Uh, that's correct, yes. So that's part of the, that's part of the assessment process. What we'll, we'll do, as I mentioned, if you remember back, I, I talked a little bit about it, uh, the gap assessment. And part of that will include the technology aspect of it and, and how that all plays together from the data and the technology realm. It's just not about the utility network, it's about the whole platform itself and and the associated elements like uh, Portal or AGOL uh, or, uh, and in this case, ArcGIS Pro. I just, have, I just have one final comment uh, that, uh, and thank, thanks to Ramtech for a great presentation and, and also the great work that they have done in, in terms of uh, dealing with the data. As I said earlier, the utility industries is changing dramatically, and as a result of that, I think the focus on better and a more complete and accurate data is going to be um, more significant. So uh, the, the companies like Ramtech that go ahead and, and help with that data cleanup and the data um, assessment and, and correction, and then putting in tools in place to uh, prevent things from happening again, we really appreciate it. So I don't know, Dave, do you have any final thoughts? And Tim? Uh, no, I just, uh, again, thanks for the opportunity. And for those that uh, have questions, um, just, you know, please let us know and we'll, uh, we'll work with uh, uh, Joe to uh, get those uh, answered. So Thanks, everybody, and uh, have a great rest of the day. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Dave. Talk to you soon. Thank, thank you. Joe.